exclusively in through her blog. Um, her hand handle is miscalculate, so it's M I S S, like you would expect. Cal, U L, and I always forget the L for some reason, and the number eight. She wants to talk about building culture. All right, so first, I feel like it's my duty to share my classic two nice things. So this I have learned before teaching, and I've done it every single year, and I will until I die. So the, the premise is that a lot of teenagers especially um, insult each other a lot, and sometimes it can be as friends, like you joke and make fun of each other, that kind of thing. So it's very common to hear, oh, you're so stupid, you're so dumb, you know, lots of different variations of that. And so my rule is anytime you say anything mean, you have to immediately say two nice things about that person. So the key to this is consistency. Because a lot of times they're going to say stupid stuff like, I like your shirt, I like your shoes. Okay, they're not putting thought into it. And if you notice, I didn't say two true things. I said two nice things. And kids do figure that out, kind of, after a while. So what's important is that it can be about anyone. So if they say something about their mom, oh, you got to say two nice things now. Or a celebrity, basically any human. But what they think is, if that person's not in the room, then it's okay to say stuff. So they're like, but they're not even in here. And I'm like, but you said it. So anywhere that I'm the teacher and they're the student and I hear it, I'm enforcing that rule. So hallway, basketball, bus, whatever. They're like, we're not even in class, but you're still the student, I'm still the teacher, and that's the rule. And so now it's gotten to the point where I don't even have to police it, the whole class does. Like, sometimes I don't even hear the thing. They'll be like, you gotta say two nice things, and the kid will just say it because of the class. Like, I don't even, I'm like, yeah, two nice things. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I've had parents tell me that they've adopted the rule at home. I've had kids mention it in their valedictorian speeches. It's the most common thing when freshmen come to me that they've already heard about me and they want to know more. And then I have some people who take it on as a personal mission to never get caught by me and have to say two nice things. Like I've had kids that are like junior to seniors and I'm like, this is the first time I've ever had to do it. Like, they're just so confused. And they finally got caught. So for me, being consistent, and I don't know about you, I got ears in the back of my head, my head instead of eyes. So I do have really good hearing, so like kids will try to say stuff under their breath even, or from across the classroom. I'll just be teaching, I'll be like, two nice things. And they're like, how'd you hear me? Like, <laughs> they really start to think it's like a talent or something. So that's my number one way of building culture. Because it changes what the kids say, because a lot of kids don't want to say two nice things, especially to people that they don't like. And so they will stop and monitor their own language like, you're lucky you were in Miss Miller's class, so I don't have to say two nice things. <laughs> so it does kind of keep some of those comments back. And you'll also find that the hardest one for kids to do is about themselves. So when they make a mistake, they're like, oh, I'm so stupid. I'm like, okay, now say two nice things about yourself. They're surprised that I'm going to enforce it about me. <coughs> and then you can really see kids' security with themselves or how they feel when it's really hard for them to come up with two nice things. And so I try to kind of model that. I'm like, guys, you should have more nice things to say about yourself than anyone. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Every once in a while, they'll catch me saying something. I don't consider it something mean, but they're like, you have to say two nice things or whatever. And so I'll easily pop them off, or I'll say, look, if you want me to say two nice things about myself, I'll give you a whole list. Like, I'm trying to model <laughs> confidence, being secure, being able to notice the nice things about yourself. And so then that links to my second building culture, my favorite thing, is that a couple years ago, someone here told me, I really admire all the questions that you ask on Twitter. And I was like, I admire that. Why would you admire that? Because to me, that's a weakness. That's showing all the things that I don't know. Like, I have to ask questions all the time. And not just about teaching stuff, but even math. Like, um, I don't know the answer to this problem. Please help me. And if you haven't noticed, people literally will work out the problem and send me pictures of it. So if you're ever feeling like you're in that boat, you will get answers, and quickly, and hopefully without judgment. I have felt judgment, so, you know, whatever they're thinking in their head, I just need the answers to the math problem for class tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, for me, what I did is thinking about asking questions as a weakness, flip that. Because other people see it as a strength, and if, from the quote that Carl said yesterday, if you are saying I'm open and vulnerable to help and I'm looking to get better, then you're already a leader. I'm like, hello, I've been leading since day one. <laughs> day one. So I want to encourage you to do, and if any people watching this 
that are afraid to get on Twitter or blogging or whatever, the thing that you are perceiving as a weakness is sometimes perceived as a strength to everyone else. So flip that script. The thing that you're feeling so unsure about, that might be the thing that you have to share. And what's even weird that I didn't even notice until I started thinking about what I was going to say is that I would say questioning is probably one of my biggest strengths in the classroom, like as a teaching strategy. But then when I do it with my peers, I felt like it was a weakness. So think about what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses that on the flip side could be a strength. And then to even flip that again, back to the two nice things and with kids, when you see kids that think that they have a perceived weakness, like, oh man, I, I always miss my negatives or whatever, how can we flip weaknesses that kids think they have to the strengths that we see, or even just saying the strengths that we see and saying the nice things about them so that they have something to say, because I'm gonna catch them saying two nice things at some point. Like, if you don't know this by now, I teach in a really small school and I'm the only math teacher, I'm gonna have them at least three to four years, I'm gonna catch them. <laughs> Thank you, the end, my good.